Hi there everybody and welcome once again in my spooky little basement. What are we doing here? I'm afraid it's not a date. Although I do think this is a very romantic place. I'm going to show you how I overwinter species that are from places with a moderate climate which means I cannot put these outside or they will freeze to death. As you know, I overwinter cocoons outside in my garden. It's no problem for many species, even if it's minus 20 degrees. Moths from Canada and North America and Europe and some parts of Asia, they have to face some harsh cold, so they don't care. The cocoons can handle it. The species that are in here, however, they are species from um, for example, Central America, like Mexico, places like that. And if I would put them outside, they would freeze to death. So let's take a look. I have two towels in here, one covering the top and covering the sides, just in case one of them decides to emerge anyways. This can happen when uh, winter, for some reason, is not cold enough to suppress their uh, development. And here we see the mother load. I'm not sure why I filmed my hand doing that. Um, yeah, just let's take a quick look. This is how I overwinter them. I, they don't need to be sprayed very often. They are humid enough. Although I spray them once every month or two months. Let's take a quicker look what I have in here. For example, here I have the biggest species of Citheronia. No, it's not Citheronia regalis, guys. It's Citheronia azteca from me Mexico and it's really it's a, it's a giant you should see the larvae actually they are on my youtube channel because I reared them last year and well judging by their abdomens I mean they can they can the abdomen can still move they are healthy they're just asleep right now waiting for me to warm them up what else do we have here we have a, a rare species of hawk moth from uh, Central Europe. It's called Retera Komarovi. It's a very nice green hawk moth with a pink underside. It's just an example of some stuff here that cannot tolerate extreme cold. This is a pupa of a hawk moth. It's one of the smallest hawk moth species in the world. It's Sphingone Geopsis Gorgoniades. I know that's a whole mouthful. Sounds like some kind of Harry Potter spell. Here we have a tiger moth from Malaysia. Arias Galactina. I guess you'll have to Google that. I mean, these, these, most of these guys don't even have common names in English, so I'm really forced to use their scientific names. But guys, when you're talking about scientific names, never call them Latin names. They are scientific names, not Latin names. And here my setup starts collapsing, but that's okay. What else is in here? Let's see, I have some cocoons. Oh yeah, this is one type of Russian moon moth, Actias Sukvisti. And some of the pupa are falling from their cocoons, which may not be a good thing, but yeah. Let's see what else is in here. Here's a Hemileuca species. I forgot what species. Oh yeah, it may be Hemileuca Electra Cleo. It's a species from Arizona, you should look it up. Hemileuca Electra is quite spectacular really. One a very awesome silk moth. I hope to show you the adults this year. Here we see some smaller Citheronias. Pupa is smaller than my huge Citheronia Azteca. It's the Citheronia Beledonon, which I again I have reared and shown you on my YouTube channel before. And it's just all the overwintering stuff that I've been breeding uh, last year that have to overwinter. Uh, some Hemaris species, I believe this is Hemaris dusalis. Yeah, there are some rarities in here, guys. So, I know it's kind of boring video, kind of educational, me digging around some of my my sick, sick Buffalo Bill-like insect treasure box, but... 
if you want to over this winter species that you know that can't stand any freezing or frost just find a nice and chilly basement I mean minus 10 degrees Celsius it's not, it doesn't sound very cold but for Central America it's, it's cold enough you know they don't need it they don't need to be outside in the snow I mean places such as Mexico yes they do have a cold winter but not as we know it in Europe I mean they even have snow and frost sometimes although it's it can be kinda rare they have it and these species need to overwinter as well so just keep them around 10 or 5 degrees Celsius and it will be fine either way thanks for watching and if you want to see all these beauties hatch you have to keep watching of course so stay tuned alright I'm getting ahead of myself here well bye